choir. Can you come on up, please?
Amen. You guys excited to worship today? He's alive, right? All right. And for a while, the disciples didn't know that he was going to make it. They, they didn't totally understand what he had prophesied. And yet, they got a wonderful surprise that morning. Amen. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. But since when has impossible ever stopped you? Pride is disappointment. Is Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the prince of dead man walking in. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. In a costal fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon.
Jesus, we identify with you and your victory over the grave. Thank you, Jesus. Great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the dark, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free.
kingdom of life forever under your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my life you reign above it all you reign above no higher name Jesus you reign above it all on the cross the work was finished God you poured out your life just to give us new life now from the lips of the forgiven Hear an anthem arise, cause Jesus, you are alive. You reign above it all, you reign above it all. Over the universe and over every heart, there is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. darkness running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise oh you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave, now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest grace. Oh, you set the darkness running out of an empty grave, now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest grace. You reign above it all, you reign above. Let's sing that last part one more time. You reign above it all, you reign above it all. Over the universe and over every heart, there is no higher name. 
Jesus, you reign above it all. Today, because you reign above it all, Lord Jesus, because you died on the cross and you rose again, we are here because you live. Lord, we are so thankful this, for this morning. We are so thankful we can come together to praise your name. Lord, you are above it all. You're above the heavens and the universe. You're above it all. You're above us and everything that goes on in our lives. Father God, we just thank you today. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for all you've done for us. Lord, we are so grateful for, for your life spare, our, given for each one of us. And we just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Just give him a minute. He's ministering to somebody right now. so thankful for you. Lord, we just are in awe of you. Lord, we love you. Lord, again, we just love you. We thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Greet the person next to you. Give them a hug, a high five, or a handshake. God is good, isn't he? Good morning, church. So I did this in first service, and I thought it might have been a Methodist thing from when I was growing up. But Pentecostals know it too, so we're going to do it together this morning. He is risen. He is risen. Praise God. Can we give Jesus a clap offering of praise this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the very first thing we want to do this morning is we want to honor our guests this morning. We are so thankful that the path that you're on in life, that the Holy Spirit has led you through these doors this morning, whether that's with a family member or with a friend that you came with, or whether you just said, I wonder what's going on down the street down there. They're loud. <laughs> We're so thankful that you're here. Um, our ushers are coming around. If you would just lift a hand for us, we would love to get a guest card in your hand. There's also a QR code that you can use that's up on the screen. You can point your phone to it, and it'll take you to our digital card. Um, the other way that we would love to connect with you this morning, if you are a guest with us, is we have our um, little blue welcome table over there. We would love to connect with you after service, say hello, um, answer any questions that you might have about the church. So if you would like to meet us over there after service, we would love to shake your hand and meet you. Can we give our guests a round of applause this morning, church? Amen. Amen. All right. Pastor Wayne's new sermon series that's coming up starting next week is called Christian World 
view. Who knows that we need to live aligned with the word of God and we need to be equipped to be able to speak the truth everywhere we go. Amen. We are living in the end times. We are privileged to be this generation and our worldview needs to come from the heart of God and the truth of his word. Amen. So come next week expectant for a great word. Bring a friend. Bring someone who needs to know Jesus. Can you guys do that for me this week? Can you be praying for somebody that needs to know Jesus and bring them with you next week, okay? Also, we have lots of fun lady stuff coming up this week. I can't tell them all by name. And also, praise report, we ran out of bulletins this morning. So Miss Crystal went and printed some more. So please grab one on your way out if you didn't get one. Because there is a lot of fun things going on this Friday, especially for women's ministries. There is a meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning in the Life Center. There's also Bunko on, on Friday night, and we would love you to be a part of that. You can also check our Facebook page is another great way to check in about what's happening here at River of Life. And our ladies' tea is coming up on April 29th. It's not a mother-daughter tea as it has been traditionally in the past because we want to open it to every lady, every walk of life. We just want everybody to come together. You can bring your daughters. Um, we are going to be hearing from Miss Melody Ellistad, and I know that's going to be an amazing, wonderful blessing. So we hope that you guys can all come. Tickets are on sale today. If you would like to be a table hostess, that is what we need to take care of today. So please come and see me in the back if you would like to get on the list to purchase a ticket or if you would like to be a table hostess. Everybody say amen. That's April 29th. And Pastor Kobe is coming up to do our offering. All right, if the ushers would like to come up. Uh, we, you can give uh, three different ways. You can give in the offering plate this morning. You can give online, or you can give in the box in the back, however uh, you want to give. Um, but I was thinking about, I just, I want to encourage you guys to give trustingly, to trust in the Lord when you give. You know, I was thinking that there's been more times than I'd like to admit that I've given hesitantly, that I haven't fully trusted God with my finances, and as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about everything that this weekend is about. And I was thinking about how I trust God that I am dead no longer. I trust God that I have new life. I trust God that I'm forgiven, that I have received eternal life. How silly is it that I wouldn't trust God with my finances? So I want to encourage you, whether that's the case for you or any area of your life that you're having a hard time trusting God with, just think about everything that you do trust God with and everything we're supposed to trust God with, and he will not fail you. He is so good. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come to worship you, to hear your word, and to give, Lord, uh, what we have back to you. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering, bless every dollar, every penny, Lord. I pray that it would be used for your kingdom and your glory. I pray that you bless every single person, Lord, who takes a step of faith to give uh, toward that. I pray that you just be with us in the service, um, and we love you, Lord, and we say these things in your name. Amen. Amen. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover, but the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh. 
Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God. We'll finish what He started. Yeah, our God. We'll finish what He started. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Woo! Hallelujah. Isn't is it God so awesome? Isn't God so awesome? These testimonies this morning. This because, why? Because he lives. We have a testimony this morning. Let's give him one more round of applause. Thank you so much. Are you happy to be here this Sunday? Isn't God good? Let's try that one more time. Isn't God good? Awesome. And as Krista said earlier, he is risen. He is risen oh, come on. He is risen. He is risen awesome. Well, I am so thankful to be here this morning. If you turn to uh, Matthew 28, uh, but I just want to say a special thanks to the worship team and also to the choir and as well as the cardboard testimony uh, people to Come and partner with us for, e for Resurrection Sunday. Say it with me. Resurrection, Resurrection. Sunday. Sunday. Isn't God good? He's just so good, and I'm so glad you're here. If you would stand with me this morning. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 7. It says, early on Sunday morning, a new day was dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning. His clothes white are, was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him. 
and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Then what does it say? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Just as he said what happened, come and see where his body was laying. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house today. So thankful that you have risen from the dead. And so thankful that we can celebrate your life through our life. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You are here today because he lives. Say it with me, because he lives. Today we are all here in this uh, sanctuary because Jesus lives. We are celebrating Resurrection Sunday because he lives. A couple of weeks ago, we were walking into prayer, and, and we were just standing there, and, and um, uh, Mike Carpenter was talking about the different things that were going on in, in the church. A couple of people were uh, filled with the Holy Spirit the week before. A couple of people, are, people here and there have been healed. People have just have uh, been touched by God, and he walks in there, and he yells at the top of his lung like you guys all know that he likes to do, and he says, He is risen! And it said, because he lives. And that is where I came up with, with, because he lives, we are here. Because he lives, we are in church today. Because he lives, we are here to celebrate Jesus. Resurrection Sunday is a reason to celebrate that Jesus lives. And you know, Krista and the girls can testify. This is one of the most... Favorite parts of the year because I love jelly beans. All right. I know. Hey, we used to live in California. We were about an hour away from Fairfield where the Jelly Belly factory was there. I didn't have like a, a, a preferred card or anything like that. But we made our way to the Jelly Belly factory a couple times. But I love jelly beans. And it doesn't matter how, what kind. Starburst. They got so many kinds nowadays. It's not just, you know, the different colors. There's different flavors. There's different kinds. And I love jelly beans. But today's not about jelly beans. It's about Jesus raising from the dead. It's about Resurrection Sunday. It's about because he lives. No matter how much you like jelly beans, it's not about jelly beans. It's about because Jesus lives. You see, Jesus was 100% man and he was 100% God. And he left his humanity 100% on the cross so that we would have a bridge between him and God. God knew that we needed a way to fix our sin problem, and he sent Jesus to do that. Jesus left his humanity on the cross. Jesus left everything on the cross so that we could have a relationship with God. We are sitting here today just as he is sitting at the right hand of, Father, of the Father, interceding for each one of us because he lives. We are here today because he lives. Then because he lives, today we all have a testimony. Today we have a testimony because he lives. Say it with me one more time. Because he lives. Because he lives, we have a testimony. Revelations 12, 11 says, And they have defeated him, being Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. They did not love themselves so much that they were afraid to die. It is because of what Jesus did for us, we have a testimony. We have the opportunity to have a testimony, just like the people who walked across this stage and they held up their card. When they were on this side of the stage, this is who they were. But when they were on this side of the stage, this is what God had made them into. It was only through Jesus that they have a testimony. Some of our testimonies are that Jesus took us out of addiction. Some of our testimonies are that Jesus healed our body. 
body. Some of our testimonies is that Jesus heals our family. Some of us have been blessed by God and gotten through financial things that we, we got ourselves into. We are only there because he lives. We only have that testimony because he lives. Today is all about because he lives. Because he lives by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony, they have victory. In, every, in any different areas of our lives, we have victory because he lives. I even look back on my own personal life. Even as a young child, I was called to be a pastor. And I don't know about you, I grew up in church, I was born in church, but as soon as I got my calling, I tried to do my best to mess it up. I tried to run from God as far as I could. I tried to find a, a feelings or, or fulfillment in competition so I would play every sport in high school. I tried to find fulfillment in different areas of my life, but God had a plan for me. And when I was ready to get my life and back on the, on the plan that Jesus had for me, he showed me the direction that, that I was to go. See, it wasn't my plan. It was God's plan. It was God's plan for my life. And when I aligned my life with God's plan, he showed me the way. He got me back on the right course. I'm sure if I asked many of you, if you could go back and you could fix all the mistakes you made or you could go back and, and do it all over again, many would say yes. But if I did that, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have lived the life that I lived and I wouldn't be here today. My life would be totally different. My life would not necessarily be on God's plan even if I got a redo. How many of you know that we need Jesus to get on God's plan? We need to walk in his testimony. We need to, to, to walk in what Jesus has for us. We have a testimony today because Jesus lives. Because he didn't stay on the cross. Because he didn't stay in the tomb we have a testimony because he lives because he lives we are who we are today whether we like the past or not we don't have to look back at the past because through Christ we have a bright future he's already been victorious and he has called us to tell as many people as we can about that victory that's coming we are here today we have a testimony today because he lives because he lives, we have a testimony. Romans 8, 37 through 39 says, No, despite all things, overwhelming victory is whose? It's ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor demon. Nor, nor our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. That time when he t allowed them to nail him to the cross, to take our sins upon his body. The only time that God could not look upon his son, who was done for me and for you. But he didn't stay on the cross. He came out of the tomb. And because he lives today, there's nothing that can separate us from his love. It is because he lives that we have a testimony Say it with me again, because he lives. And because he lives, we have a friend in God. We have a friend in God. Look at your neighbor and say, we have a friend in God. Come on, they didn't hear you. We have a friend in God. John 15, 19, 9 through 17 uh, talks about it. In verse 9 it says, I have loved you as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey the Father's commandments and remain in his love. When I read this this week, it was an eye-opening thing for me. 
Something I'd never seen before. Jesus is actually taking the relationship that he has with the Father. And he's saying we can have part of it. Because he's saying as I have loved you, I want you to love each other. Then I have shown you what the Father can do. I have shown you the path to the Father. It is through the cross that we have a path to the Father. And it says that Jesus loved us so much that if we remain in him and he remains in us and we obey his commandments, that God will remain in his love inside of us. And that is a relationship that we have the opportunity to have. It is because of the relationship that Jesus had with God that we can now, as followers of Jesus, have that same relationship with the Father. It is through Jesus Christ and only through Jesus Christ's example can we have that a remaining, that relationship with him. See, this is key that we understand and we know that God loved us so much that he br put a bridge between us and to get over our sin. That Jesus is that bridge. Jesus is that key. And he's saying you can have what I have if you just love each other. See, verse 11 says, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. See, God's joy overflows because he's there with us in the lowest of lows and he's there with us in the highest of highs. When we are walking in Jesus' joy, then we have the power to, to keep our mind on him. We have the power to, to focus on Jesus. And he's there in the highest of highs, but he's always or the lowest of lows, but he's also there in the highest of highs so that we can keep our eyes on him, so that we don't start to think that it's all about me because it's always all about him. It's always all about his joy, his love, his compassion for us. It's always all about him. Jesus is the ultimate friend. Jesus is our friend. And because he lives, we have a friend in him. See, God's joy will be with us no matter what. Verse 12 says, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. Jesus is calling us friend because he laid his life down for us. Jesus put all in. Jesus was the ultimate friend. He put our needs before his own need. And Jesus isn't asking us to do anything that he hasn't already done before us. That he loved us so much that he calls us friends so much that he laid his life down for each one of us. That we see a great example. Maybe we've ultimately lessened the word friend. This, nowadays, most people think that it was a miracle in itself that Jesus had 12 friends and only one of them betrayed him. That he was able to find people that were loyal to him, that walked beside him. If we all had 12 friends, think of the damage that we could do to the devil. Think of the damage that we could do if 12 friends came together once a week and prayed. Think of the damage that we could do to the devil if we came together and we held together like they did. And maybe we would have one Yahoo in the bunch like Jesus did, but we could bring him along with us too. And maybe we could just have the friendship that would turn this world upside down because that's what those disciples did they turned this world upside down because they had a friend in Jesus because Jesus lives we have a friend verse 14 says you are my friend if you do what I command I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. Again, Jesus is opening up that door, that bridge between us and the Father. He has is, he is shown us everything that is going to happen. He has shown us everything. And he calls us friends because he has shared it all with us. 
and invited us to be a part of it. This world that Jesus wants you to be a part of everything that's going on in this world because he wants to set you free. He wants you to lay down this world and pick up what the Father has for you. And it is only through Jesus that we can do that. It is only th through Jesus that we can see the Father. It is only through Jesus' friendship that he came down and gave his life for us. It is only because Jesus still lives. And verse 16 says, you did not choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the father will give you whatever you ask for you ask for using my name this is my commandment that you love each other see in bible times it wasn't natural for the rabbi to go out and pick his disciples the disciples would actually go and beg the rabbi please be my teacher please teach me the law they would go out and they would seek out a rabbi, but we know that Jesus did things a little different. We know that Jesus went and picked his 12 disciples, but just as he picked the 12 disciples, he has picked you this morning. He has called you this morning to be part of what he wants to do to turn this world upside down. He wants to see the gospel preached in the highways and the hedges. He wants to see people come to the fullness of who he is. He wants to see through you and through me that he has picked us and he has called us friend. Say it with me one more time. Because he lives. And this morning, because he lives, we have a savior. Because he lives, we have a savior. In John 3, 16, most everybody knows it, but it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This morning, because he lives, we have a Savior. Because he lives and he died on the cross for me and you, we have an opportunity to have a relationship with God. Because of the sacrifice that he made, because he walked out of the tomb, we have the opportunity to have a Savior. God the Father sent Jesus his Son, his only Son. Say that with me, his only Son, the only person ever to live without sinning and that person chose to die for me and for you and because he rose again we have an opportunity to have a relationship with God the Father because he lives we can have a savior because he lives we have a savior with every opportunity we have a Savior this morning. We have the opportunity this morning to leave here a new creation. We have the opportunity, because he lives, to leave here new in him. See, Jesus talks about being born again. And to be born again, we have to receive that new life from Jesus. We have to receive it. And how do we do that? When we come to the realization that Jesus' death on the cross paid the price for our sins that we have committed, we have to come to that realization. We have to believe that Jesus rose from the grave and is alive today. Personally, each one of us, we can't do it for someone else and we can't do it as a group, but personally, we have to come to the realization that we have sinned and we need the redemptive power of the death and resurrection of Jesus. We have to ask Jesus to forgive our sins. And when we do, we receive the Holy Spirit to help us live for God and grow in our relationship and dependence on him the remaining days of our lives because he lives this morning 
we have a Savior because he died on the cross and he lives in each one of us. And if he doesn't live in you this morning, you have the opportunity to have a Savior. Because he lives, say it with me, because he lives, we have the opportunity to walk out of here with a testimony. We have the opportunity to see God change something in our lives that we need changed. We have the opportunity to walk out of here with a friend. We have the opportunity to walk out of here with a Savior. If the worship team would come, I'm so glad you came to church on Easter Sunday. I'm so glad that you're here today. As we want to celebrate what Jesus did in our lives. This is the day that Jesus walked out of that tomb. This is the day that we celebrate that as they went to the tomb, it was empty. Jesus is not dead. He's alive. Jesus is alive today, and we have an opportunity to walk out of here again with a new testimony, with a friend. And if you didn't walk in with a Savior, you have the opportunity to walk out of here with a Savior. This morning, as the prayer partners come, if you would stand with me this morning. about the fact that he lives that Jesus lives so this morning if you came here and maybe you were invited by a guest or like Krista said you saw a rowdy bunch of people and you came through the doors if you came to here today and you've never asked Jesus to be your savior if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and you would like to I, I would like if you just slip up your hand just like those people who walked across this stage that there's something new that you need God to do in your life I ask you to raise your hand thank you thank you and we're going to pray in just a minute but if there's anybody here that says I just need a friend I need a friend in Jesus. Would you slip up your hand? Let's pray together. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for walking out of that tomb. Lord, today, I place on the altar Whatever it is, I need you to do. I ask you for a new testimony, new victory in you. Lord, I also ask you to 
come alongside of me and be my friend. Show me, Lord, your commandments and your love, and I will follow you. Thank you again for walking out of that tomb and giving me new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer partners are down front if you need prayer. Also, worship with us together this, uh, this morning.
Just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah.
Let's sing that one more time this morning. morning because he lives because he lives this morning we're so thankful that you are here just go knowing that God loves you that you have a new testimony in him that you have a friend in him and you have a savior that you can go to so this morning I wish you the best Resurrection Sunday ever and go with God because he lives. This morning, if that spoke to you, that you're holding back, he's telling you to reach out to him. He's telling you that he has you, that he loves you, that he gave everything for you. We'll linger for just a few minutes if you need to pray about something that has just popped into your heart. Will you just play softly? If you need prayer, because God is talking to you specifically this morning, that he's got you, that he loves you, and he wants you to lean on him. This morning, do not leave here if God has something for you. God loves you so much. We know that through the cross. We know that through what he gave up for us. He gave up all his humanity so that we would have a pathway to our God. So this morning, we'll linger again. Have a great Resurrection Sunday. God bless you.